Right, what is going on people? Now, welcome to today's video. Now, today's video is one that I have wanted to do for a while um, because of my own personal experience. This video is gonna be all about how to reduce knee pain and how to strengthen it, how to strengthen those knees and make sure that you get rid and eradicate knee pain for life, okay? Now, about three months ago, I had excruciating knee pain felt like I couldn't even drive the car, was going to sleep with bad knees, almost a shooting pain on that sort of, just below my kneecap. Now, your patella is basically the thing that attaches your kneecap to your shin bone, your tibia. It seemed to be what is called patella tendonitis. And I found that when I was speaking to a lot of people, it seems like a lot of people who are in my sort of lane in the fitness industry, whether it be clients that are training with me and have trained with me for years, whether it be clients around the gym, everyone seems to have knee pain, okay? It's so, so common. Now, the first thing to note before I get started in this video is I wanna say that I am not a physio, I'm not a sports therapist, I am not a doctor or anything like that. However, I have had a lot of experience in the last seven years on the gym floor as a personal trainer. I've had a lot of experience in the last eight years of training myself. Now I'm gonna separate this into two categories. Now the first thing when I first had that excruciating knee pain was pain management. But I'm not gonna do what the doctor tells you because this always used to annoy me. Big overweight doctor who's saying just go and take eight weeks off the gym. I'm not about that life, okay? Pain management first and then we'll give you exercises and videos which are gonna be here next to my head of how to strengthen your knees for good, okay? So the first three things for pain management. Now the first one, as hard as it is, you need to reduce your training volume. Now I'm not saying don't train anything. I think movement is always medicine and that is something that I heard from someone who I look to for advice, okay? But what you can do for example, before I was hurting here, I was probably squatting or flexing my knee in some way three to four times per week. So initially, I dropped that down to once per week. So I was pretty much only having sort of one lower body squat session, and that's gonna eradicate some of the inflammation and gonna reduce some of that pain initially. So reduce your training volume or your frequency. The second thing is ice. Ice was one of the absolute best things that I ever got introduced to and I thought it was a bit of an old wives tale. Now I'm not talking about jumping in the ice bath even though I would do that because it would have the same effect but I bought online from Cool Sleeve a freezable knee sleeve. Now after every session where I was feeling a little bit of pain I was pulling the sleeve on, pulling it, it was my right knee where I was getting most of the pain and this was actually reducing the inflammation and after about 30 minutes of having the ice pack on and doing it for a few nights, it was actually feeling a lot better around training. Ice has massive anti-inflammatory um, properties, so you can definitely reduce that inflammation around the patella tendon and around the knees by doing that. It's not an old wipe still. And the last thing, obviously, you've probably heard this before, is basic stretching and stretching the muscles around the kneecap. So things like stretching off your calf, so not doing a calf raise, doing the opposite. Stretching the calf, I will try and put some calf raises here. Um, quad stretches, quite a lot of um, knee pain can come from having tight quads. And basically the quads being so tight that it tries to pull the kneecap up. Um, and vice versa, the glutes, if the glutes are too tight, they can have some sort of distraction from your knee as well and pull that kneecap into the place where it doesn't want to be, okay? So having tight quads, tight glutes, even probably tight hamstrings doesn't help and tight calves will definitely give you some discomfort in the knee pain region. So adding some basic stretches, nothing crazy, definitely helped reduce that sort of pain. So the first one here was something that I got from a physio a physio that I was working with from Active Life. Now I'm gonna tag her here, she's called a stoic physio, and when I first was working with her, she gave me the heel tap step down, okay? Yeah, heel tap step down. Now essentially, I had a bit of an imbalance and it was my right knee that was hurting. And what she was essentially saying is, I'm struggling to con control the eccentric, the downward phase on my right leg, 
and that's why that patella is sort of hurting and that's why that one's getting much more inflamed than the left side. So doing single leg work like this, pre-squatting, it's a bit like a polycon step up. I'm gonna put the video here now, or it already is as I'm speaking. This was definitely helping me out. Now, what I was doing before any sort of squat session, before any sort of lunge session, anything that would include that, was doing three sets of six per leg, but trying to really concentrate on controlling the negative, okay? So that was my first exercise. The second movement, still a single leg exercise, and this is one of the ones, just a little bit of fluff there, this is one of the ones that I got from the knees over toe guy, especially is the ATG split squat. Now I was first introduced to this when, when that pro, when I was hurt and three months ago, I jumped on a different program. And funnily enough, I got told about these ATG split squats. Now I'm going to show you one here and it is completely different to a Bulgarian split squat, which I'm a massive fan of. So if I was doing that in the session, I was just doing one to two sets per leg, not really anywhere near failure and trying to really drive my knees over my toes. So you can even see the heel elevating off the floor. It is not the, quite the same as a Bulgarian split squat. You are actively trying to drive your knee and almost exaggerate it over your toes to strengthen that plane of motion, to strengthen that sort of area. If we can't get strong with the knees over the toes, then how can we expect not to have knee pain when in training the knees do grow over the toes? Now, the third exercise is tibia raises. So these looked crazy to me when I first saw them, but in my research of finding and how to reduce um, knee pain, I found that it was a lot of basketballers that were getting injured from obviously jumping up, being explosive and jumping down. Now, one of the things that these basketball players were doing was doing tibialis raises. And essentially, you will see me doing them on the screen here. It looks like you're doing a calf raise backwards, but it's because no one is training the front of the shin. Everyone wants massive calves, even though I, I haven't got them, but everyone wants massive calves, but everyone trains mass, everyone trains calf raises, but not everyone is training the other muscle, the front of the shin. I've just been doing three sets of 30 or just going until it burns and then trying to add 10 more, more reps, simple. Now, the last exercise that I've been doing, which has been an absolute game changer for me, and I think this is, this is the one that has helped my squat pattern, the sissy squat. There are a lot of different variations that you can do, and I think this is the most scary one that you can do when you first start doing this type of training or this type of accessory movement before you are squatting. So what I've been tending to do is, I'll be doing three to four sets, of anywhere from three to five good reps of sissy squats. Now you're gonna see videos pop up left and right beside my head of me gradually improving and getting better, getting lower on the sissy squats. It is a very, very hard movement. Now the only thing I would say with this movement is I did not do this straight away in the first couple of weeks. I worked on reducing the inflammation and worked on the ATG split squat, the tibia raises before I did the sissy squat because I felt like the one that the sissy squat has the most pressure and the most force because it's your full body weight traveling through your knees by driving those knees over towards it is completely safe but if you have a lot of inflammation there on week one and you're sitting there and you're going to start this today that's probably the one that you're going to need the most assistance with but you're going to see me here doing upper body assisted sissy squat so essentially I'm holding the barbell and I'm holding and controlling maybe like at least half of my body weight and allowing my knees to take the load of the other half of the body weight. So that is one of the absolute game changers. I would very much recommend it. And the other day I was front squatting and I've never felt better on front squats. Front squats are one of the hardest exercises in the book in terms of knee flexion. There is absolutely loads of that. If your knees can't travel past your toes, you are not gonna do an effective front squat. That has been an absolute game changer. And I think that the reason I'm more confident than ever with that is because of these sissy squats. So those are my four main key movements to completely eradicate knee pain and strengthen your knees for life. What I've been doing two to three times a week, normally before my lower body sessions, is doing a couple of sets of each movement and that has been an absolute game changer. I can't recommend them enough. Now, like I was saying before, there is a lot of people that I've got inspiration from. The knees over toe guy, the stoic physio, Chris, my osteopath, the, fruit the 
Brutition Osteotherapy. I'm gonna tag them all here just because I wanna try and give people who have really helped me a shout out. But again, if you need some of this, I definitely would include this in your training. Try and spice things up a little bit. If you have any messages and you wanna ask me any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you because I think if you're watching this video, it's probably because you have a real issue. And um, apart from that, Hopefully you can enjoy, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you can eradicate your knee pain. And apart from that, I will see you in the next video. If you like this style of video, give the video a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to me if you haven't already, and there's plenty more coming. I know that a certain few people have not got knee pain, but they have back pain and they've already asked for that video. So I will see you in the next video.